Welcome back everybody. Welcome if you are new another NASCAR Thunder 2003 career mode episode today We've got Dover and Kansas on board for this one next episode We have Talladega, which I'm really excited about because we've been really fast at the super speedways so far this year And the last episode we finished our tire wear R&D and now we're working on tire grip. We've got five more races left on it We did it kind of quick. So we could we uh, paid a little bit more money for it But uh, tire grips gonna be huge for us going into next season because there are there's like eight races left in the season And uh, this will be done in five more so then we can build a new chassis for next season Which is gonna be great for us I do have one chassis being built uh, that will be done in two races. So after this race and next race, uh, we'll have our new uh, chassis for the tire wear, which I'm not necessarily needing to use at Dega. But after that, we'll have that uh, new chassis, which would be great for us. We do only have $44,000 in the bank right now, but we have like, uh, I think an engine being repaired, the chassis being built and a different one being repaired. So we have a lot going on with the R&D. We're just sitting here trying to build up money for the end of the year going into next season. But going on to Dover, let's see how we can do. And uh, we've been qualifying really well lately. We have like the new sponsors on board for like qualifying top 35, which would be really nice, hopefully. And uh, hopefully we can continue to rack up that money uh, going into the se next season. And uh, hopefully we can do well here at Dover. All right, we're like about a second and a half off of uh, the qualifying time. So we'll see how that goes for us here, like position wise. It'll probably be on our second lap because first lap, we don't have too much speed coming into it. But uh, this definitely would be one of those tracks where the tire grip's going to be huge coming in like next season because you can see the stability help popping up a ton, which means we are getting slowed down a bunch because it's trying to not spin us out. We got 40th there, but we need to get better than that. That was a terrible turn one. We got a 23.7. Fast as I ran was like a 23.63 in practice. And I would like to try and qualify top 35 for the sponsor money. Because we just signed that to coming on board. Just send it off the corner, getting stability help a lot. That's going to get 60. That's going to get 6 there. 30? No, nope, we're still 40th. Okay, so we're way off pace here. We're live at Dover International Speedway for the MBNA America 400, brought to you by MRN. Now, Barney, this is one of the tougher tracks that we come to. Why is that? This place has got high bank concrete corners that can be really tricky for some drivers. You've got to always be thinking ahead in this race and planning your passes well. Otherwise, you may quickly find yourself in the wall. Michael Waltrip joined DEI at the start of the 2001 season and got a win in his very first race for his new team. He followed that up with some very impressive runs at the restrictor plate tracks. He's always had a knack for drafting and with top-notch equipment, you'll be sure to see him up near the front. Things are not going well this year for the Windcraft car. And a good finish would go a long way in boosting that team's morale. I guarantee it would make a whole lot easier to come to these racetracks. I don't know why they were talking about Michael Watcher doing well at restrictor play tracks. This isn't a restrictor play track whatsoever. So don't understand uh, that statement at all. I'm just trying to get down to the bottom immediately. We already got in the kitchen trader right off the bat, but uh, we're not going to be very quick here whatsoever. With us not qualifying well, that shows that we're just going to be off pace in this race anyway. So it's not going to be a pretty one. Probably just going to finish 42nd to whoever blows their engine that we uh, end up beating out. But we are just off pace all together here. Like, I have this thing pretty much maxed out for straightaway speed. And uh, it is it has acceleration as much as it can. But uh, we can't do a whole lot about it, honestly. Can't get into the corner very well when somebody's under us. Just washes right up the track. And then just the stability help of this track slows us up a ton. So, cannot wait for that tire grip R&D to be finished. And, like, we can get that chassis built. Because that's going to help us out a ton. I honestly think like all the mile and a half and even some of the short tracks or probably a lot of the short tracks it might help us out a, uh, a good bit so basically we've just been good at the super speedways we qualified well last episode i forgot what track though it might have been new hampshire where we qualified like 23rd maybe i think we ended up finishing like 36th which is like one of our better finishes on the year that's not a restrictor plate race and we're getting in the wall ow 
That destroyed the right front of the car. But, uh, yeah, this is just going to be one of those races where we're off pace. I might try and uh, drop some wedge when we go in pit because uh, the car is very tight, but also the looser I make it, the more the stability help wants to uh, pop up, and we're just we'll probably be a little slower, honestly. So I'll have to mess with that, maybe drop it like a half a round or a full round. But uh, we'll see what happens when we go pit. It'll probably be in like... I don't know, 15-ish laps. We'll probably be a lap down by then, but uh, we're just gonna hope multiple people wreck or something, blow their engine, maybe we can get a little lucky. We're now on lap 10, and I have Mark Martin, who qualified pole and the leader still currently by a good bit, whoever's back in second. It looks like it might be Dale Jarrett and then maybe Jeff Gordon, because I saw like a white and brown car and then the uh, the red car of Gordon, obviously, and then uh, we've had a big rivalry with Mark Martin in the past uh, with uh, Dirt to Daytona. Oh wait, that's not uh, Dale Jarrett behind us. I think that is Sterling Marlin or Kevin Harvick. It's a very gray car. Who is it? Which one of you? The 29, and I smacked the wall. I almost wrecked the hell out of Kevin Harvick there. Because I was holding left to try and make it through the corner, and I smacked the wall. I'm still holding left, and I about destroyed Harvick. Uh, Gordon is out front in the point standings by a good bit over, I want to say it's Dale Jarrett, Dale Jr. They're second and third, I want to say. Harvick might have fell the fourth, and then Stewart is fifth by, like, a good margin. He's back there. But, oh, I'm trying to stay out of these guys' way. Stewart's getting by pretty easy. I just can't keep it down in the corners at all. I'm trying to stay out of the way for the most part. Uh as much as I can, so hopefully we don't get rear-ended and everything, but uh, we're just out here struggling. We're doing the best we can. Hopefully we can make our car a little bit better when we pit, and uh, I'm waiting for somebody to blow their motor. I'm waiting to see the, the smoke and somebody going slow on the bottom side of the track, but we're going to be pitting here in like seven-ish laps, so we'll see what goes on then. Cars are starting to pit now. They're on lap 17 going into 18, so they're pitting a little early. I'm probably going to be about two laps down, I would say, uh, by the end of this. Maybe three laps down by the end of this, because they did catch me on, like, lap 10, honestly. So, it might be, like, three laps down going on to four. But, like, we'll see how bad it gets. But uh, we're going to pay here in a couple laps. But uh, just wanted to update everybody then when people were pitting. And we might be, like, a higher position by the time we pit. We definitely will be, but... Oh my god, I destroyed the right front in the front end. That is not good news at all. I'm going to actually come down and pit now because we are very off pace anyways. I'm going to finish multiple laps down, so I know I can make it the rest of the way on fuel. Okay, we're getting rear-ended now. Cool. I just want to get down here, Jamie McMurray. Yeah, cool. Thank you. That's all I want to do is just get down here. Uh, might as well get the damage fixed so I don't blow up the car. Uh, I'm going to drop the wedge a good bit because on that very long run, we were way off pace. Like, or not way well, we were obviously way off pace, but uh, the car got super tight. So uh, we got it slowed up a little bit there, but it's not going to make a big difference. We're still going to be last regardless. Oh, they're wrecking on pit road behind us. What is going on but in the mirror? Oh my goodness, thank God we got on pit road when we did because that looks like a full mess. I think it was Jeremy Mayfield was turned around. They're all still stopped on pit road. Oh my God, get us out. Get us out. Let's go. We could actually gain some spots here. There is a pile up on pit road. I think they actually might have gotten it going right there, unfortunately, but we're 40th. Hey, we're not last. I don't know what the hell just happened. That is completely wild. And now everybody is working their way off pit road now, it looks like. We might have just gotten super lucky to not finish dead last, but we also still might finish dead last in this race after that, like, catastrophe on pit road. And, yeah, it looks like everybody is now getting off pit road just fine. I just don't know what the hell uh, Jeremy Mayfield did and how they all wrecked like that. That was absolutely hilarious. Well, I have 41st and 42nd straight behind me. Frank Kimmel in the orange car straight in our mirror, and then Greg Bickle's right behind him. That's 41st, 42nd, so they all caught up to me. Not surprised, but uh, it was cool to be up in, like, to 39th at one point because I think we passed Jeremy Mayfield because uh, he ended up multiple laps down as well from everything that happened on pit road. Yeah, he's the car in front of us for position now, which is wild. But, uh, yeah, that was the craziest thing I've ever seen happen so far in this game. There goes Frank Kimmel. Can't do anything about that. Like, we were just so off pace. I'm, I was just, wasn't even trying to hit Kenza there. I'm just so tight. 
and the car just did not want to get off the corner. I imagine Mike Skinner getting on the outside lane. Yep, he is in 43rd. So, so far, everybody's still in this race, and nobody's blown their engine quite yet. Greg Biffle's trying to put us three wide. We're getting tight on exit. I had to hit the brakes. Now we get put three wide and into the wall by Mike Skinner, so that's a little unfortunate for sure. That was just unnecessary. But, uh, yep, back to dead last now, and we just have to wait for, hopefully, somebody to blow their engine. That only hasn't happened in, like, two or three races all year where somebody has not blown an engine. So, I'm kind of banking on that for uh, us to not get dead last. Oh, there's somebody that blew their engine, and it is Mike Skinner of everybody, which is kind of funny. Because I think that... Oh, wait, did we pick the sponsor? to beat Mike Skinner in races, because it would beat Robbie Gordon, beat Mike Skinner, or maybe rank, rank top 40 in earnings. I might have picked the rank top 40 in earnings, honestly, which, uh, averaging it out, we finished 36, and now we're going to be 42nd, so that's going to be about, like, 38th, 39th. But uh, Talladega will help us out a lot with that, because we'll get paid a decent bit, finishing pretty well. But, uh, so yeah, there's our uh, not last. I, I was hoping it was somebody that wasn't Mike Skinner. That would have been nice. But, uh, because I felt like we were slowly catching him. Like, his tire wear is as bad as ours, so we were, like, kind of catching him anyways. But, uh, I smashed the wall a couple more times, and our whole car is almost yellow at this point. Still can't get this thing rotated at all, but I cannot wait for the tire grip to, uh, get finished. And then tracks like this will be a little bit better at. And then, after the tire grip, I think we need to work on the chassis downforce. I think that will help out quite a bit. Not too worried about the drafting in the car, but the more downforce will help at mo most tracks, I feel like. So that will be the next R&D we definitely have to work on. Ooh, we are hitting the white flag now. We're three laps down. Oh, I'm about to wreck Ricky. I'm about to wreck myself. Holy crap. Open Jeremy Mayfield of everybody. That's unfortunate, but uh, so that's gonna really hurt our car a lot more than it already was. That's a little unfortunate. Yeah, the whole front ends red. The right front is black. Oh, that thing is destroyed. So yeah, our car is uh, done for after that one. So good thing we're getting some new chassis and stuff and uh, rebuilding uh, another one because this one's absolutely destroyed. I I didn't really use our best stuff luckily because I wanted to save our better engine for Kansas and then Talladega. Oh, Jeff Pur Purvis uh, blew his engine. Too bad it was on the last lap of the race, so we couldn't even gain another spot from that. And our hood is flapping. Oh, no. We still get a little bit of money out of it, 111000 That seems to be like our base amount at the bottom. But, man, if Jeff Purvis could have blown his engine like uh, two laps earlier, we could have gotten 41st. That would have been a little helpful for us. But Junior ends up winning it by a tenth over Jeff Gordon. They had a hell of a battle there towards the end. Don't know where Mark Martin went. He must have been caught up in the uh, pit road scuffle and stuff because he was leading the race when uh, I went to go pit and everything. So that's quite interesting. Ricky Rudd ended up fourth out of that. That's kind of crazy. But Junior trying to make up some points on Gordon here uh, coming into the end of the season. We made a little bit of money there. We're up to 95000 Uh This car is going to be trashed pretty much. I need to modify the hell out of it because uh, we need a different engine. We're going with this one for... Kansas and Dega, so hopefully we don't kill it at uh, Kansas. This one's getting repaired. This one is now basically trash. Uh, we're going to have to repair that one pretty badly, and then we're going to change our chassis as well. We should have this chassis for Dega, I believe. Chassis is already assigned? Okay, we're fine. We got the same chassis then. So should be good to go for Kansas at least, because chassis, uh, it's building a new chassis for the next race. The repair time is still three more races. Okay, good to know. Engine has three more races to repair. So didn't really go too fast on those because we didn't have money when we were trying to repair everything, but getting things done nonetheless, we're still dead last in the points. No shocker by that, by quite a bit. We, we lost at the Shane Hall a few weeks ago and then he is just pulled away from us. Shauna Robinson is the one ahead of us now, but uh, I believe Gordon's still in the lead, but Junior is making a comeback now, getting that win. He's only 74 back. Del so Jerry ended up with the top five. Still lost some points to Gordon, but pretty tight battle here. Going into the last, like, what, seven races of the year or something like that? Yeah, last seven races of the season. Kansas up uh, next. Should be a fun one. Lately, it's had some great races in real life, so hopefully we can have a decent one here as well. All right, got the car as quick as I can for here, whatever that means for us. We're a little over two seconds off the, uh, the pole time. It would definitely be on our second lap unless we really screw up the second lap because we were just really slow coming to the line there. 
I really I tried to mess with a lot in the setup on this time trying to really drop the tire wear as much as possible and then loosen up the car in other ways because uh, maybe that could help us out in the long run uh, just we'll see how it works out honestly I don't know if it will or not but hopefully this second lap we can hit decent you don't really want to drop below the front stretch like onto the apron at all because it really just slows you down it doesn't like pick up keeps picking up speed like normal it kind of just maintains and barely picks up speed so it doesn't really work like uh you would normally like to cut down there we ran a 33.2 i ran a 32.7 so far in practice that was a really good three and four i'm trying to make the stability not pop up as much as possible trying to keep the car straight that felt like a good exit off four i don't think our one and two was very good but get a 32.5 okay that's only two seconds off the leader that's 35th i'll take that it should get us some sponsorship money Hello and welcome to the Kansas Speedway for the running of the Protection 1 400. Tell us a little bit about this track, Barney. A first time winner here, definitely not out of the question in this one. Being that this place is still relatively new to these guys, everyone is on an even playing field as far as experience here. Scott Wimmer really needs a good finish in this race. He's got a long way to go on the points list. And how frustrating that must be. You're working just as hard as everyone else, yet you just can't seem to finish well on race days to gain the valuable points you need. These guys need a good finish just to regain their confidence as a team. We really haven't seen a good finish this season from the Windcraft car. Yeah, I really feel bad for those guys this season. They come to these tracks and work so hard, but they just never seem to get the car exactly right. Jeff Green might not be a household name, but he's had a lot of success recently in stock cars. But, you know, there's no doubt. He won the Bush Series Championship in 2000 by over 600 points, and he's finished runner-up in that series to a couple of talented guys with the names of Dale Earnhardt Jr. and Kevin Harvick. Oh my god, they said Jeff Green won the Xfinity Series Championship or the Bush Series Championship back then by over 600 points? That's wild. Back when the points were, like, the right way. That, I love the way these points are. Like, there's no reset. Best driver of the year wins it. It's how it freaking should be. I, I just, I hate the playoff stuff where it comes down to one race in the year. The best guys in the season could just not even make the final race, even have a chance at the championship. Like... That stuff never makes sense to me. Like, I understand it for promotional reasons, TV reasons, but competition-wise, like, it's just not the right way to me. NASCAR, back in the day, was so much better with that. But, like, they changed it in 05. I didn't even like it back then when it was a 10-race season, basically, at the end. Like, the top, what, 10 to 12 drivers. And then it moved it to 16 and stuff like that. But it went from 10 to every three it would knock people out and then down to one at the end one race i am loose in the back stretch i can't get it straight but uh yeah we already felt a last as per usual i would say but i'm real interested to see if my tire wear thing is gonna work because i made it to where we have like the least amount of tire wear i think we possibly can in this car so i'm really hoping on the long run we're not gonna fall off as bad that's my main goal like we'll see how it works hopefully it does because if so i can kind of implement that at a lot of other tracks too and i think it will be a huge deal to be able to make it like better on the long run because uh, on the short run we're okay for like a lap or two and then we really fall off on the long run and then some of these other guys start falling back to us even while we're like off pace like mike skinner sometimes biffle john andretti sometimes like Shauna Robinson, they all start falling back to us in these long runs. So I'm hoping our car will be better pace uh, later in this run for sure. But we'll be pitting about 10 laps or so when we start running close to uh, fuel. Whoever the leader is, is absolutely gone from everybody. Holy crap. They have like a quarter of the straightaway on everybody. So that's absolutely, absolutely nuts there. And there's a huge gaggle of cars up in front of me. Like not going super fast, but they're all congested really bad. I don't know who's leading that. Cars on pit road now. It's only lap 11 now. 
Uh, we haven't got a lot done yet, but I believe it's uh, Dale Jarrett out in the lead when I last looked, and he is gone from everybody in, on the field. Like, it is crazy on how fast he is going. He is, like, putting down track record after track record or something. I don't know. But I haven't fallen too far off on average time, I'd say. Like, we're still running, like, low 33s consistently, I feel like. That was kind of a slow lap because I did scrape the wall turn four on that lap and then coming in, messing up three and four right there also. Hoping somebody will blow their engine as well so we can permanently get a spot. But I'm going to maybe come this time by. I need to see how congested it is. Because if it's really congested, I might wait another lap. Yeah, it's getting a lot of people on pit road right now. I think it's... Uh, I think it'd be a time to wait because we're not really like super off pace of what we're going to be anyways because all I'm doing is changing tires really so nothing's really going to change on the car we can get a little bit of draft off Dale Jarrett here as well maybe that'll help some for this next lap everybody else should be coming down like this time for the most part and they're going to start getting checked up from the guys coming off pit road which I did not want to deal with but there's not many cars on pit road this time. So I might get checked up by like one of them maybe. But not as bad as it would have been last lap I feel like. So let's try to get on pit road nice and easy. Right at halfway going into lap 14. Dale Jarrett's running a little long. Not sure where the line is. I just need to get down to 70 so we don't speed. We were right at five second penalty. What? I didn't speed though. What the hell? I am so annoyed by that. I literally sped right up to 70. It must have went to 71 at the last second because I barely tapped the gas. You don't have too much control over that at all, but I swear I hit that perfectly. I'm so mad about it. Pit crew had a decent time as well. I don't know exactly. Let me see what we get. 21.3. So we had a 16.3 second stop. Like, it's, it keeps telling me we're going to have like a 17.8. And our guys keep banging out low 16s. That sounds wrong. Pause. Um, our pit crew is getting better and better every week. So that is good. I'm, I'm not drafted. I hired a bunch of really, really young uh, like low to mid 20 year old uh, crew guys so basically they could try and improve over the year which they have a lot because I did look uh, last episode like at the uh, afterwards after I was done recording and uh, some of the guys have gotten like a handful of uh, percentage better and some happiness is good and uh, oh god we're almost three wide there but uh overall they haven't gotten like great i don't know what it would be like if i like fire some of them and try to rehire different guys like how much of a difference would i get on some of them like would they be a lot better or would they be even worse i don't know or could i even rehire the same guy if i fire him i don't know because i don't remember how this game worked exactly but might have to uh look into that going into next season just to see if we can get a couple better guys just to just for fun maybe some of like the real lower um percentage guys oh somebody blew an engine up here and it's slowing down these guys a ton coming off pit road not gonna be guys oh it was dale jarrett he was going too fast he blew his engine going too fast oh boy he was second in the points like 60 50 something back oh man what a bummer for him because he is going to finish dead last in 43rd to us and I don't know where Gordon's at I think he was top 5 I'm going to check real quick Gordon is in second right now oh that hurts for Dale Jerry a ton and Junior is going to be the in second place now for sure so we're going to see if Junior can catch Gordon the rest of the season I guess and we're going to have 6 races left after this one we are coming around to the white flag now. So we only went one lap down in this race, which wasn't too terrible. Leader's about to take the checkers. They're coming off four. Uh, only two of us were a lap down besides Dale Jarrett, who blew his motor, obviously. He should have uh, probably won this thing because he was so fast. But I guess he was too fast for his own car because he blew his motor with how fast he was going. But uh, I, I'm happy I kind of found out that tire wear issue thing. Like, not issue, but I found a way to cheat it a little bit to where they don't wear out as bad. They still definitely wear out. Like, you can see the tires are getting worn out. Fronts are yellow up there. I fell off maybe a second at most for, like, the full run. 
So it's not that terrible. Like that last lap, I ran a 33.6. My fastest was a 32.8. So I, if I can get that honed in from some other tracks, it'll be pretty good. We did get a good amount of sponsor money right there because of that top 35 qualifying spot. So that is huge. Gordon ends up getting second. Bobby Labonte gets to win. I think Gordon lost by 0.101 last week as well. But very close finish. Top five all on top of each other, which is crazy. Dale Jarrett finishing last is going to really hurt him in the points. So let's go uh, check on everything and get ready for Talladega next episode. And that race was really nice for our bank account. We got 215,000 now. So qualifying that top 35 is huge for us. We 100% can do that here at Talladega. I know we could finish in like the top 25 as well. Uh, let me get my best car possible. I think it's going to be what we have right here, honestly. Uh, because the uh, chassis, I don't think we have a better one. Oh, actually, we just got the new chassis, but it's mainly like just the tire wear. It does have a little bit better downforce, but everything else is kind of the same durability durability is actually better on these ones up here which is kind of funny this one's getting repaired uh i might just stick with this number two and then we'll use number four for the upcoming tracks because we don't need to worry about tire wear here at all uh i'm not worried about one downforce or one tire grip because talladega is not going to matter at all so honestly actually i kind of want to go at the 83 just so because the durability is fine. Everything else is exactly the same as the uh, 88. I'm going to go with that one because it's not going to matter as much. Everything else is 50 across the board. This is definitely our best engine. Uh, we got the most power in it. We lost two power in that last race, but it is what it is. Should have maybe used uh, this one and uh, just took the hit. We were finishing in 42nd anyways, but oh well. Hindsight's 2020. But uh, we're going to get on to Talladega next episode and we're going to be just fine. We, we usually do pretty well there. I'm happy about that. Uh, the new chassis is complete. I kind of want to wait on building a new one until this tire grip is done because we do have another chassis being uh, re uh, repaired right now and we also have an engine being repaired. So don't really need to build another one or we could uh, kind of. How much does it cost? It could it would cost a lot to do it fast. Holy crap. Maybe we just do it for nine races for next season. I really don't even know at this point because we have three that we're kind of rotating through a little bit. It, uh, as soon as this one repairs, I'm going to get this one all up to repair. Actually, I should probably start building another one because uh, I'm going to do it in six races time. So it's done by the end of this year going into next year because we're not doing any more engine upgrades for quite some time. And we have the money to uh, not waste, but to do things a little quicker. But uh, stats wise, yeah, we're going on to Talladega. I'm super excited about that. And then Lowe's, so that's going to actually be nice too. I think two decent back-to-back -back tracks for us. Martinsville is going to suck. Atlanta might be okay. But uh, statistics wise, uh, we're uh, not that far behind uh, Shane Hall again. He had a rough race. Apparently. Or maybe he wasn't in that race because I think he was at 14, 18 before that race. Maybe he didn't race in that one because uh, he hasn't been in every single one. I know that for sure. But up front, Dale Jarrett took a massive hit in that race. Yeah, down to 190 or 179. I'm dyslexic as hell. And then uh, Junior even dropped some more spots because Gordon finished in second once again. Two weeks in a row, he finished in second. So he is uh, having uh, not a commanding point lead, but it's going to be tight between him and Junior for the rest of the season. Six races left. Talladega is this week, which is a uh, dark horse. And Junior is great at the drafting track. So he might make a comeback here towards the end of the year but hopefully you guys have enjoyed the career mode i've having a ton of fun we're almost done with our rookie season and i'm super excited for next year when we have this other r d done and we can get more chassis and better chassis and then we're going to work on the uh downforce for the chassis as well so not really going to mess with the engine too much i think it's more on like the tire grip and downforce and stuff which is going to help us a lot in the corners and at a lot of the immediate tracks i feel like so uh it'll be more useful uh off rip but uh hopefully you guys enjoyed appreciate you guys watching as always and i'll catch you guys in the next one we're at dega